Let me ask you a question. Do you like openings that are very powerful at all levels of the game, have a massive amount of extremely common traps your opponent can fall into while also being virtually unknown? If you answered yes to all those questions, then you will love what I have for you today. Today I have for you the Bowden Kiesaretsky Gambit, also known as the Improved Stafford Gambit, and this is extremely powerful. I am so surprised this has fallen under the radar for so many people for so long, and today I'm going to share with you all the secrets and tricks of this opening. So, it comes after pawn to e4, black plays pawn to e5, and now we go bishop to c4 here. This is the bishop's opening, and black has a few moves here, but the most common and best one for them to play is knight to f6 here, immediately attacking our pawn, and instead of defending it, we actually play knight to f3 here. Now, this is not the gambit we want just yet. Currently, this is the Urasov gambit, and the gambit that we do want comes after they capture the pawn, and I will get more into this. However, I do know that a lot of the time, they will not do what you want, so I'll also show what to do if they play two of the most common alternatives. Now the first one they can play is bishop to c5, and this is very common, this is the third most common move, but it is actually just terrible for them because after knight takes on e5, we are already borderline winning here. The reason for that is that we are now threatening uh, either of our pieces moving to f7 here. Specifically with uh, the knight to get a fork, but we can also capture with the bishop as well. For example, if they capture on e4 uh, and try to get the kind of mirror thing on us, then we can simply capture with a check, black has to move over, and after pawn to d4, we are up a pawn, black cannot castle, and we already have a great position here. Uh, if they try castling instead to defend it, then we simply go pawn to d4 here once again. And if they try instead pawn to d5, which is their best option here, then we can simply trade. And after once again pawn to d4, we are simply up a pawn with a borderline winning position. So, bishop to c5 is a pretty bad yet common alternative. And the other good one that they can play is probably knight to c6 here. And now we transpose into the two knights knight's defense of the Italian game, and here you can simply just go pawn to d3, then castle on the next move, uh, move your knight out, move your bishop out, and you have a fine position here. However, if you're looking for something a bit more ambitious, you can also try knight to g5 here, and this is going to go into the fried liver attack. I have a fantastic video on this opening if you want to play that, but now let's get into this gambit. So, they capture on e4, and now we play knight to c3. What we're doing with this move is we are attacking the knight, and if they want to keep their one pawn advantage, they are going to trade knights. Now we capture back with the d-pawn, we open up our bishop, and even though we are down a pawn here, we are immediately attacking this, and we already have two pieces out and are ready to castle on the next move. Now, I'll give you a little spoiler here, black's only good move, I mean only good move in this position to retain any of their one advantage that the engine says here, is to play pawn to f6 and defend the pawn like this. They literally cannot do anything else. If they try pawn to d6 here, then uh oh, they have fallen into a trap, knight to g5, you are already winning. We are threatening a fork on f7 here, and they actually cannot stop this. Their only way to kind of try to stop this is bishop to e6, but this just doesn't really work because we can capture it with our bishop, black takes back, and now we have a very nice queen to f3 here. What we are doing is we are both threatening a checkmate on f7 as well as attacking this b2 pawn over here and subsequently the rook in the corner as well. Now their best move here is bishop to e7, but what most people play here is actually queen to f6 and here we just have a very easy win because now we capture on b7 and this rook in the corner just cannot be defended so after they move we can simply capture it, we're up a rook and we're completely winning already. So like I said, bishop to e7 is the best move here, now attacking our knight, but we take the pawn once again, and here they pretty much have to play knight to d7. 
this is their only real attempt here, but we have to play knight takes on e6, the only winning move, and we simply fork their queen and this square, and we're just completely winning here. They cannot do anything. After they move their queen over, we can simply capture the pawn, uh, black will move their king, and now we simply capture the rook, defended by the knight, uh, trade happens. Our knight is trapped in the corner, but it doesn't matter. We are up so much material here, and we are completely winning. Their only other real try here is to capture our um, knight like this, but then we can simply trade, then capture the rook. Our queen all the way over here defends this pawn, and we are once again just up in exchange with a much better and completely winning position. So, pawn to d6 is a very common trap they can fall for, that is the second most common move, but the third most common move is knight to c6 here, to defend the pawn like this, but once again we have this move, knight to g5, and they're once again just completely losing here, because of this threat on f7, it, it, it can't be stopped, it literally cannot be stopped in any way. Their only real attempt here is to go pawn to d5, uh, they do actually have a pretty good alternative here, which is queen to f f6 i'll look more at this in just a second but if they try pawn to d5 then we can simply capture of our bishop and after bishop to e6 this is just depressing we can capture of our knight they capture again now we capture this knight they have i think one of the worst pawn structures you can possibly get they have two pairs of doubled isolated pawns absolutely terrible and we can just win them with queen to h5 check they have to play pawn to g6 and now we capture on e5 now we fret in the rook and we fret in this pawn so after they move now we capture an e6 we're up two pawns here now this pawn probably lost as well this is completely lost for them so pawn to d5 does not really work their only real attempt here is to go queen to f6 now we do capture on f7 here attack the rook but if they are smart they will not defend it but instead play bishop to c5 Fred in a mate on f2, at which point we simply want to castle to stop it, and now they move the rook over to f8. And currently, this is actually looking pretty good for them, uh, because it's an even material position and they have a lot of pressure on our f2 pawn, however, after knight to g5, you will quickly see that black is completely lost here. We are threatening a fork on um, h2 of their queen and um, of the rook, but more importantly, our own queen is now going to get in soon, and their king is actually surprisingly unsafe. They can capture on f2 and win a pawn, but this is just a bad move, because now we move over. And after, like, queen to g6 to uh, protect this, we now go bishop to d3. We skewer them, now they have to move their queen once again, probably to d6 here. Now we capture an h7, we attack the rook, and even though this is a material uh, even position, now our queen is going to get in, our bishop is going to get in, and they're just completely lost here. So, knight to c6 does not really work uh, either. Their other alternatives include pawn to d5 here. Uh, what they are trying to do is that after we capture, now go pawn to c6, and it looks like we now have to move our bishop, and then they're going to trade queens with a pretty equal endgame. However, we actually just win here with bishop takes on f7. The idea being, if they capture, then we simply win their queen, so they have to move up, but now we get bishop to g5. We skewer them, they capture, now we capture the queen. I mean, this is just easily winning, we're up an entire queen here. Uh, they can also try bishop to e7, which is not completely terrible. What they're doing is they are giving back the pawn to then simply be able to castle and have a fine position here, but you are not going to calm down. You are going to try and put pressure on black. Here you play queen to f3. Now, you are attacking this uh, f7 pawn here, and they have to defend it, and they only have two good ways. The first one is queen d8, and defend it like this, and this might not look very good, might look a bit passive, but this is probably their better defense of this pawn. Uh, after we simply castle here, by the way, we just have a fine position. Their other defense here is to go bishop to f6 and block us out this way, but now we go knight back to g4 here. We attack their bishop and fret in to double their pawns, and what they probably should do here is just back their bishop up to e7. Now you can go back and offer a trade if you want to. However, 
what most people play in this position is rook to e8 check because it looks like just giving a check with the rook getting on the open file looks like a good move but after bishop to e3 they actually just have a worse position here because now they can no longer move their bishop away because then they would simply drop this pawn here because the rook is no longer defending it so because of that they're probably going to play pawn c6 here prepare the pawn to d5 push but now we can simply capture on f6 force them to have a ruined pawn structure and after long castles we simply have an advantage in this end game because of their atrocious pawn structure so bishop to e7 is not a totally terrible uh, alternative for them their only other real try here other than pawn to f6 which is the main line i will get into more is pawn to c6 here what they're doing is they're once again giving us this e5 pawn, but after they capture, they now go pawn to d5. And this pawn to d5 push is very important for them to try and get. Now we have to back our bishop up, and now they play bishop to d6, attack our knight, and the move you want to remember here is to actually just castle. The idea being is that if they capture, now we go rook to e1, we uh, pin them, like this and after something like knight to d7 you now go pawn to f4 you attack the bishop and they really just cannot move it because they're pinned so they're probably going to castle now you're going to capture them and their knight in front of their bishop is actually just pretty awkward here and after like rook to e8 they can attack the pawn but we simply go bishop to f4 here we defend it and if anything this is just an equal position uh you do have the open f file here try and use it and yeah you just have a fine position here so those are all the alternatives that they can play and all of the nice little juicy traps however after pawn to f6 which is the main line there are actually just even even more traps I think there's even two or, or three uh, more traps in this position so what you want to do here is just castle the reason you do this is that now you prepare a threat of actually capturing on e5 for example the most common move I stress this the most common move in this position is c6 preparing pawn to d5 but this completely loses because of knight takes on e5 because after they capture back now we get queen h5 check in uh if they move up then queen captures is checkmate so they have to play pawn to g6 but now we capture here we get to this fork and after they play queen e7 we simply capture we're up three points of material here and completely winning uh, do note the reason we cannot play this um, in this position is that if we get all that same line once again they now play queen e7 and we're actually pinned here so we have to castle um first because of that little detail and because of that pawn to c6 does not work at all despite it being the most common move now their most common move or i should say their second most common move that is actually good for them is pawn to d6 this is the main line i'll get more into this in just a moment but they can also try knight to c6 here if they play this then now you go rook the e1 now they play pawn to d6 and you are simply going to play this in the exact same way you do in the main line which is pawn to d6 here and now you go knight to h4 what you are doing with this move is you are threatening um, another trap here if they play like knight to c6 then now queen to h5 check if they block the check then we can actually just capture and the rook is trapped because if they capture back then we just take it so they have to run their king to d7 and now we go pawn to f4 here which is the second reason we move our knight out of the way to allow us to play this pawn to f4 pawn break and according to the engine we were only slightly better here but i would um much rather be white in this position because i would not like to have a very awkward king on d7 so because that um they have to play pawn to g6 here which just looks super ugly they're moving all of their pawns but this is their only way to try and defend here at which point we now go pawn to f4 the key pawn break here um threatening to either push up to f5 or capture and just try and rip open their position and the move they have to play here is queen to e7 if they do not play this then we'll just do all the same things but it will be much stronger 
and after pawn to f5 here, now they have to play queen g7. When I say they have to play, I literally mean they have to play. This is their only way to retain any of their advantage. It's really weird, queen to e7, queen to g7 maneuver, but the idea is actually um, very simple. So they cannot play pawn the g5 here because it looks good uh, attacking our knight, but here they fall into yet another trap after bishop takes on g5. Now they capture back, but we push up to f6. We kick their queen out of the way. Now they have to move over. Now we play check with our queen. Their king has to move over. Uh, and now we win with knight to g6. We get that same pattern. Their rook is completely trapped, so they have to capture. We capture the rook, and we're just completely winning here because uh, even though we're only up one point of material, their king is in complete shambles. So because of that pawn the g5 does not work and also capturing the pawn does not work either because then we play a check of our queen once again king has to move over now we capture on f5 our knight and after a trade here once again uh black is still up a pawn here and the engine does prefer black very slightly but i would much rather be white here because black's position is just so cramped um how is this bishop going to develop anywhere of use and yeah we just have a fine position here and if they do not do either of those bad moves we are threatening to capture them and then just you know simply win a pawn so that is why they have to play queen to g7 here and even in this line where um, black does get uh, everything they have to do, we still do not let off the gas pedal. We play bishop back to d3. We once again threaten to capture here. Now they push up to g5 and this bishop captures trick does not work anymore because they would simply capture back. So we have to back our knight up. And after knight to c6, we now simply go bishop to e3 here, and even though black does have some advantage due to the um, being uh, up a pawn, I do not hate white's position at all here. Black has an incredibly cramped position because of their very awkward pawns and our extremely powerful pawn on f5. Uh, these bishops cannot develop anywhere but these two very passive squares. What is this queen doing on g7? What is this rook just being passive? Uh, I mean, they cannot castle short because of these pawns, and if they ever castle long, then we can very easily start a pawn storm. And yeah. So that is the extremely tricky and extremely unknown Bowden Kiyazaretsky trap. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe if you want more, and uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.